Hey, welcome back everyone to part one of the Sun Ultra 5 restoration. All right, well, it's taken a while, but it looks like all the parts have finally come in that I needed to get the Ultra 5 upgraded and working how it should. So the first thing we've got here is some memory. So this is Samsung RAM. If we turn it over, there's the Sun part number, 128 megabyte RAM, 50 nanosecond, and we've got two of them. So that'll bump us up to 512 megs. It'll certainly be a good start. And next, oh, all at once, we've got a bunch of stuff. So let's take a look at is a Sun PGX64 graphics card. So you can see that that has the ATI Rage XL chip on it. And for those of you who aren't aware, this has uh, eight megabytes of RAM, which should be enough to run 1280 by 1024 at 24-bit uh, color. Weirdly enough, there are a lot of electrolytic caps on here. So that's kind of a weird one, but all right. Ah, we got the standard Sun disposable wrist strap. Very nice. This one is a little bit interesting. I actually haven't seen one of these before. This is the sort of reverse of normal. Now, most of these video cables are to hook a a Sun 13W3 connector up to a VGA monitor, but this is to hook up the VGA output from the Sun up to a Sun monitor. So it's kind of cool, but um, I don't think I'll need it for now. Most of the monitors I would use with this have a, a VGA port. The other thing we have, very nicely, is our Sun graphics card installation guide. Let's see what's in here. I've never seen one of these before, so your guess is as good as mine. So let's see, we've got the installation guide. It's pretty good, I think I can download this online. What have we got here? Uh, a CD-ROM, I guess. It's just drivers probably. Um, product notes, usual Sun license high quality cardboard. All right. Okay, now some of the other stuff we have that I think we'll need will be a new CD-ROM drive. So the Ultra 5 came with a CD-ROM, but it sounds pretty sick. So I've got one of these. And what this is, is a Toshiba XM6102B. Uh, I think it's a 12 or 24x speed uh, CD-ROM, and it's uh, pretty standard. Parallel ATA and all that. We've got audio cables, and um, mode select, and that kind of stuff on it. So we're gonna need that guy, and then for storage, well, we've got one of these, got a Mac store, 40 gig, uh, Ultra ATA 133 D740X6L. So that's our sort of fallback plan. We need an IDE hard drive. We can use that guy, but I want to try a few things first. I got 
one of these, an IDE to compact flash SSD adapter. So that's a possibility. I don't know if it will work. Uh, I also got um, an IDE to SATA converter and I've got a SATA SSD here. So we're going to try and throw all this stuff together, see if we can install Solaris working. I'm hopeful. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's run over what it is we're going to do today. One, we're going to take the RAM and we're going to go from the existing 256 to the 512 megabytes, which was the maximum supported officially for the <clears throat> Ultra 5. Uh, next, I want to do a BIOS. Well, old habits die hard. The open boot upgrade. And we're going to go from, I think it's uh, 3.29 to 3.31, which is the last version they made. All right, after that, uh, I want to see what I can do for the storage. No, actually, I want to do the CD-ROM replacement. Um, and I want to replace this current CD-ROM drive, which kind of works, but is very sick sounding. Um, and we'll just swap it out to the better version. Uh, then I want to sort out what I can do with storage. Ideally, I can get an SSD running. If I can't get an SSD running, um, then maybe I can get a compact flash running. And if I can't get that running, then we'll go, although I still call them IDE, we'll go with a hard drive. And then I guess we'll see what version of Solaris we can run. And with that done, then we're gonna go with the PGX24 graphics on the main board. And then we're gonna install our PGX64. And hopefully we can benchmark that and do, see if it makes any difference. I'm not expecting great things here. This is still a pretty much a 2D chip, but at least we can run in 24-bit color, which we can't do today. So the issue here is I can't run in 1280 by 1024 times 24 bits. And that's a table stakes resolution. So I want to be able to run better color with, with this guy. And so, all right, I think that's going to keep us busy. Let's get to work. All right, so we got to do a little bit of disassembly first. Uh, we're going to be replacing the CD-ROM. We're going to be throwing in some some RAM uh, in there uh, underneath the floppy drive. So we got to get some things out of the way here. Uh, the first thing we can start with is to get out the ribbon cables. So uh, this Ultra was nice. Uh, the previous owner, why well, they took out the hard drive, which is great. Uh, they didn't also take out the and remove the hard drive cables. So I have started off by removing the, the primary IDE channel cable. And now I've taken the audio cable off the CD-ROM and I'm taking the CD-ROM uh, IDE cable off. Next thing I'll do is unplug the CD-ROM's Molex power connector. And then the floppy drive is on this very nice sort of U-shaped removable bracket. You don't have to uh, unscrew the floppy itself. You can just unscrew the bracket. It pulls out of these like keyhole type connectors and comes off. We'll pull off the Berg style uh, power connector and then the floppy cable is there as well. And the floppy cable is keyed. I always check because many floppy cables aren't and there's always the risk of plugging it in upside down and and uh, usually it just turns on the drive light but I have seen some bad outcomes from that before. So 
awesome. So with all the, the ID and floppy cables out of the way, with the power cables moved out of the way, it's time to put in the RAM. You can see the uh, DIMM slots exposed there. And it's got two 128 megabyte DIMMs already installed for a total of 256. Um, and you can see these new ones, they're the same size and they're keyed, they're asymmetric. They're essentially impossible to put in in the wrong orientation. And they, they're a little bit mushy going in. The Ultra 60, Ultra 2 RAM really snaps into place. Um, but these, uh, these feel a little bit softer going in. Uh, but they've got the white clips on either side that you can pull into place and make sure that they're properly seated. The chips on these uh, DIMMs are a little bit thicker than the ones that are already in there, but hey, you know what? If you buy by Sun part number, you never have to worry that you've somehow accidentally bought the wrong RAM or something unless someone's trying to fool you. So up next is first boot with the new RAM. And great news, you can see from the open boot banner uh, that we've got 512 megs installed here. It shows that it's all 50 nanosecond memory. Some of the Suns originally came with 60 nanosecond, but um, yeah, this is great news. Looks like it's working. All right, so next item on our list is the BIOS update. And the reason why I want to do the BIOS update is because we're going to be looking later down some of these ones, looking at storage, maybe using newer types of storage, looking at Solaris, new graphics card. Some of these things can be dependent upon what was in the BIOS. So let's go to the latest version and we'll see if that fixes anything. I'll show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I've got this old hard drive. So this has Solaris 8 on it and it's from uh, an Ultra 5. So I want to get this guy hooked up and I'm going to use that to do the BIOS update. I'll walk you through everything. So these cables, I mean, they couldn't be easier. It says drive on it. So great. Put that in and this, the motherboard and goes into the motherboard and LX power. Great. All right, now we'll get this guy started up and we'll do the BIOS update. So this is my own kind of internal website I've made and it's where I've sort of stored all the ROM files that I've found over the years for these. And I've got the uh, Ultra 5 slash 10 uh, ROM file here. So I'm just gonna download it onto the Ultra 5 and just saved it there. So now we're going to open a console window and uh, we can unzip it first thing. Great. And it's got a readme in there. If you want to look at the instructions on exactly how to do the update, uh, that's the one you should read. Uh, they did publish a, another one as a PDF available on the Oracle website, but you don't want that. So then what you've got to do is the first step is you've got to copy over the, the BIOS file. So you've got to become super user because you've got to copy it into the root directory. And then you've got to make it executable. And then once you've done that, you're basically ready to reboot, but there's a hardware change that we've got to make first. So I'm going to shut the computer down now. And the hardware thing that we need to change is we need to uh, switch over a jumper on the motherboard. So this is the right protect jumper for the flash uh, chip that's on the motherboard. Uh, it's right next to the flash chip there. It's just down from the UPA slot and right next to the floppy uh, disk drive slot. And you can see the flash chip there with a white sticker on it. It says Einstein, which is uh, short for Einstein, which was the uh, code name for this motherboard. It says E. 329v0 so if that is the the version of the open boot that shipped with this and we're just changing it I think from position 1 2 to position 2 3 great and now we can actually write the BIOS so here we've powered the computer on the first thing we do is we hit stop a to get to the OK prompt and you can see it's just sort of saying OK there it's not trying to boot it's just waiting for us to tell it to do something 
So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to boot from the disk drive and we're going to tell it exactly the file that we want it to boot. In this case, it's that file that we copied out of the zip archive uh, into the root directory. Great, so it boots up really quickly and this is the flash utility. So it's just saying, hey, this is the flash prom update utility. These aren't the right files to update all those different ultra systems, but it's the utility to update all those different ultra systems. So we basically just hit return to continue. It shows us what's installed. It shows us what's available to install. And you can see there's two things that can update. It can update the open boot and it can also update the post firmware. In this case, we'll just tell it to update both. Gives us a couple warnings, asks us, you know, sort of, are you sure you want to do this? Great. And then it's actually really quick to do it. I think it takes maybe about 30 seconds in total. Obviously, if you have a power off during this scenario, you may wind up with a bricked or unbootable sun. I'm sure that there's probably some kind of a method to be able to restore from that. Um, but thankfully I've never had to do it. I don't know what it is. I've never seen it documented, so, so don't quote me on that. But um, yeah, that's basically it. And you can see here on the reboot, things are looking great. We're running 3.31, so firmware upgrade was successful. Next thing on our list is that CD-ROM. You know, we're gonna be, once we get this done, we're gonna be mucking around with different operating systems. Um, and I want a working CD-ROM drive. This one kind of works, but it makes terrible like crunching noises. Um, sometimes it spins the disc up, sometimes it doesn't. So I want something in there that I know I can trust. And there is what's coming out. LG CD-ROM, ROM version 1.0. Nothing on the back. Sun part number 48X. I'll happily take a slightly slower 24X if it's going to be more reliable for us. And that's pretty much it. It was already set up as the parent device, so connect the cables and we're good to go. So let's see where we are. Back out a bit here. We've done our RAM. All right, we've done the BIOS update. Put in a new CD-ROM. So I'm gonna stop it there. Rather than make one huge, long, over an hour video, I thought I'd cut it up into a few pieces. It all works out in the end, however, but there's lots more interesting stuff to see. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you have a great week. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon.